Well, 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 what do we have here? A new German heavy bomber? Let's take a look. Alrighty, so the Messerschmitt 264, a brand new heavy bomber that will be joining the ranks of the German aviation tech tree in update 1.89. So let's start off with the pros and cons that Gaijin have listed for this aeroplane. First off, decent payload somewhat debatable we will get to that in a minute and also deadly defensive weapons true although there are still some significant weak spots cons on the airplane uh low speed and poor climb rate uh generally i don't see this as being a massive issue uh obviously initially this is a long range bomber so it's likely it's going to be getting the long range bomber spawn point which puts you at an altitude of 15,000 feet so climb rate uh in with after the initial spawn not so much of an issue depending on who you're facing and depending on what br this is low speed could be an issue we'll have to see exactly how slow it is in uh, sort of a practical gameplay scenario large target it is big um the wingspan is about the same as a b29 bit shorter but it is about the same wingspan as a b29 so it does give quite a large surface area for enemy aircraft to shoot at so getting on to that uh, that that payload that i mentioned uh, a minute ago so four tons you may be thinking, yeah, that's not much. So effectively the same payload as the JU-288 on an aircraft that is two or three times bigger. Bit of an issue there. Now, originally the airplane was predicted, uh, sort of theorized or planned to have a 13.2 ton bomb load. Quite a world away from what we're getting here. Now, the reasoning for this was when, when they tested the initial prototype of this aeroplane, they found it had issues with the higher weights. Now, it is likely if the development process continued rather than the project being cancelled, they would probably have ironed out these issues and it would have a way, uh, way bigger bomb load. This is not the case. So, Gaijin are simply working off of the info they have on the aeroplane and on the testing that took place with the only flying prototype which had issues with high weights so they have gone for a lower bomb load it is likely that if more info surfaces in the future this could change although for now we are likely just going to stay with the four ton bomb load this bomb load currently consists of a variety of bombs going all the way uh, all the way up from the 250 kilogram bombs right up to the sc 1800 same bomb that is used on the ju-288 so I would say it's not um, an unreasonable shout to say that this thing will likely have the exact same payload options as the 288. You have the same type of bombs, and at least for the 1,800 kilogram bombs, it's only going to be able to carry two of them, which is the same as the 288. So that's likely what we're going to be seeing here. Now, in terms of deadly defensive weapons, uh, you have two sort of main caliber turrets on top of the fuselage these each carry a single mg 151 20mm cannon and then you also have uh, four single 13mm mg 131 heavy machine guns scattered around the airplane i can see three of them i can see the one in the nose and i can see the two waste gunners either side of the fuselage at the rear although i can't see the fourth one so do let me know if you know where that uh, that fourth mg 131 is but anyway good amount of armament uh, one issue there are no guns on the underside so the enemy can easily kill you by just going underneath you. You can't shoot them. They can pull up, fire a load of shots into the underside of your aircraft, probably knock out most of your crew, and likely do a lot of critical damage to your airframe. So that's a big weakness there, a uh, big issue there. Although I won't talk about that more now. I think that's more a subject for talking about in a gameplay video where I actually show proof of this and showing it in an actual gameplay scenario. So now moving on to one of the cons, the low speed and poor climb rate. Well, we know the speed. The speed is mentioned in the dev blog, 520 kilometers per hour at an altitude of 6,000 meters. This aircraft is powered by four single Junker Zumo 313 engines, or sorry, 213 engines. So, you know, sort of uh, simple engines there. I believe they're inline engines uh, with the cooling system and all that sort of stuff. Now, the climb rate, two meters per second, uh, but going by our good friend Wikipedia, yeah not so good so a climb rate of two meters per second uh if you need to climb to altitude after being at ground level from landing or doing whatever it's likely that's going to take you a little while so yeah um i don't really know what to say about that considering just how bad that is i genuinely would not be surprised if gaijin do pull some number out of nowhere to improve that climb rate a little bit we will just have to wait and see on the dev server but if it actually is that bad then yeah, you better hope that you don't make it back to the airfield, because otherwise it's just going to take you bloody ages to climb up, and you're probably going to get murdered as you're trying to get to altitude. 
So now just to finish off the general look of the aircraft as a whole, something that I uh, I do like. Um, I do like tricycle undercarriage aircraft, especially big heavy bombers like the B-29, the B-24 Liberator, all these sort of things. So this one really is right up my street, something I like. Although unfortunately, if the performance isn't too good, it's likely it'll be an aircraft that I'll research and never really play. Although it is nice it's being added into the game. One of the slightly more obscure Amer uh, German aircraft from World War II so definitely something nice to see added into the game. Now one last thing I do want to mention is something that some people in the comments were confused about. Uh, the fuel tank situation. So basically what, what Gaijin said was, Fun fact, the ME264 was the first aircraft in the world to incorporate integrated wing fuel tanks into the design. A lot of people then said, Oh no 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 Gaijin, there were many airplanes before with fuel tanks in the wings. This isn't what they're talking about. What they basically mean is that the wing was the fuel tank. If you look from above, you can see that there are some quite um, visible lines in the wing. Effectively, you've got the wings made of three sections on this airplane. You've got the trailing edge section, uh, where the flaps are mounted, where the ailerons are. The leading edge, uh, where at least in most modern aircraft, you generally have the leading edge uh, de-icing system, which mostly consists of just hot vapor being blowing uh, from the inside onto the uh, skin, and that will go off with the ice. Uh, though on this, it's likely there's just nothing behind the uh, leading edge. Um, but the center section is literally the fuel tank. The, the wing is the fuel tank. It's not a case of fuel tanks in the wing, but more the wing is designed to be the fuel tank. This way you're saving weight and you can take uh, more fuel, higher fuel capacity. And due to this being a long range bomber, that was the plan with this design. So I just thought I would quickly clear that up, at least that is my understanding of what Gaijin were trying to get onto. So hopefully that is a bit more uh, sort of understood by a few of you guys now. Anyway though, the Messerschmitt 264, nice looking aeroplane, uh, the performance might be good, might be bad, we will have to wait and see until the dev server, or possibly just until the live server, to see just how this actually performs. Otherwise, certainly I'm very happy to see it coming along to the game. Very nice little obscure aircraft here that, you know, I like the looks of. I like how it looks, and I am excited to give it a go on the dev server, and hopefully on the live server soon after. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys really do help with the motivation for keeping these videos coming. So big thanks to you guys. If you did enjoy, please consider smashing the like button. Maybe even subscribe to the channel. If you do, that would be massively appreciated. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.